up on 21st century. In Norway, surviving terrorism, learning the lessons and helping the victims. In Northeast Nigeria, millions are displaced by violent extremism, surviving conflict and the threat of famine. Hello and welcome to 21st Century. I am Adeshawa Josh. Terrorist attacks draw headlines around the world, but what happens to the victims and survivors once the media has moved on? We take you to Norway. After the 22nd of July, I just felt the need to do more. Everything about my values before 22nd of July just became stronger. I think about it probably indirect or directly once every hour in some way because it's a part of me. the shooting I was on the middle of the island and then we heard something that sounded like a firework and we were walking towards the main harbor when I saw some of our boys just pointing like just run just run just run I hear Gunnar saying to another friend of mine that was a Glock boom boom you know and then the following seconds are the longest seconds of my life I think because I'm looking dead in the eye with, with one of my friends and some people with blood in their face was running across the camp and said, he's shooting us. And then, of course, all hell breaks loose. I'm just concerned about my brother, of course, you know, trying to make him feel safe. This little boy in our delegation was only 15. He started to swim and was like, we, we have to swim. And and I felt that I, I can't let you swim alone. The true story is, I just chose how I want to die. Do I want to drown? Do I want to get shot? Just felt like less painful to drown. That's the truth. I, I never thought I would make it all the way. Um, but I, I swam 400 meters that day. I did. He could swim backwards too, so he could see Breivik. I couldn't see Breivik, I could just hear him. And he said, if I get shot, you have to just continue swimming. And I was like, why are you saying that? When I was 10 meters in the water, Breivik was right behind me. And the reason why I survived is because he was standing there and shooting the kids on that rocks. So we had time to escape because he was killing someone else. So we're running and get to this cliff area. And me and my brother is the first one to arrive there. And we hear the shots coming closer and closer and closer. It was a cliff like this, but me and my brother was there. And it was an overhang, but then again, you can, sh you can stand there and just shoot down in the cliff. And he did. And I don't remember where I was hit the first time or the second time, but I remember being hit. And, and falling down to the water, you know. 
I was like lying in the water and then I saw my brother just one meter away and he was like trying to get me to, you know, he wanted me to come. And I, I, I stood up and kicked him down in the water. I wanted him to go around the bay. I stood up, got shot again. The last shot was the one in the head. I got hit five times in total. Breivik felt that the multicultural society destroyed Norway and the Norwegian culture, but culture is always changing and the Labour Party and Labour Youth always believe in that, you know, culture is something people create together. I understood that I was very badly injured and I understood that if I just rest now, I will die. So I, I just lie there and talked and talking to the people and yeah, this is going to be all right. I don't remember if it made any sense what I said. And then it slowly just went morphed into like all the pirate songs, you know, just like being a drunken sailor down there just singing and trying to, you know, trying to not fade away, you know. The willingness to live was just so super strong. I felt that I couldn't see on my eye, and then I just kind of went up, and then I, I realized that I was actually touching my brain. And then I remember thinking, okay, I should not touch my brain no more. The minutes went, the hours went, two hours in. At one point, the terrorist was coming uh, around again, and then uh, someone in the cliffs said, shut up, really. Norway has a great health system, so everything about the health was, you know, well taken care of. And they were there and they followed you up. And it's in these kind of situations that you realize how good the welfare system in Norway is, is, is great. For me, I, I came pretty fast back to uh, my daily life. But, you know, sometimes I need to, you know, take a walk or some things might be heavy. And I always had bosses and friends around me that just, you know, gave me the space. They had to put me in a coma because I needed to be in a medical coma, of course. And the next six days, they did over 20 surgeries on me. They rebuilt half my face from here to here. It's, it's not, it's, um, it's like this plate there and like this, screws and stuff. 